Hey guys, how's it going? So just a quick reminder before the video starts, I've put out a form link for you to fill in if you want to be a beta tester for my TCM. I don't quite know when the beta program will go live, it's when I finish assembling all these boards and get everything ordered, uh, but I'll let you guys know in another video when that happens. Anyway, I have a load of people with the EGS52 module who signed up who want to test, but I'm severely lacking people with the newer EGS53 module found in the 204 and newer Mercedes vehicles, so if you have one, please consider filling in the form. Anyway, as you may know, earlier this month I posted about going to Germany to do some filming. See, the head of the company I work for owns a 2014 Sprinter with an updated EGS53 TCM, and we thought it would be a good idea for me to try and work on the EGS53 CAN code for my TCM so it can work in the newer Mercedes vehicles whilst I was there. So I naively thought it would be a pretty easy job to do, just write the EGS53 CAN layer like I've already done for my EGS52 code in my own car, then plug the TCM into the Sprinter and start it. So at this point we cut the cameras and spent the entire rest of the day debugging why it wasn't working as I thought it should do. After taking multiple CAN logs with the stock EGS53 module plugged into the Sprinter, we finally found the issue. You see, this part number is a Y. You see, even though the module in the vehicle was marked as EGS53, the physical PCB is indeed that of an EGS53 module compared to EGS52. However, the software running on this EGS53 module is actually designed to be compatible with the older EGS52 CAN network. It seems the transport sector of Mercedes simply uses hand-me-down parts from their passenger vehicles division. After we realised this, and flashed the EGS52 code on my controller, it did work as expected, but unfortunately there was no light and it was very late in the day, so I didn't film any of that. So, with that disappointing day out of the way, when I arrived back in England I went straight back to work on the TCM in my car, as well as purchasing a Mazda RX-8 with the help of a friend. Expect to see that car on the channel sometime soon, maybe I'll do some electronic modifications to it or some hacking, I don't quite know yet. Anyway, the first thing to do was to enable the torque converter lockup, as this will drastically increase the fuel economy of the vehicle, as when the converter is locked up, the engine now has a direct connection to the input shaft of the gearbox, rather than it having to spin the turbine of the torque converter using only fluid, which is great for torque, but horrible for fuel economy. However, it is actually quite hard to lock the torque converter up correctly. See, an automatic is supposed to feel smooth when the clutch is engaged. The clutch engagement happens hydraulically by activating this torque converter solenoid, which in turn moves this valve in the valve body of the gearbox, which then sends mainline pressure to the torque converter clutch. The pressure is regulated by pulsing the torque converter solenoid around 100 Hz. This in turn moves this valve back and forth very quickly, which regulates the line pressure being sent to the clutch. Due to this, the current torque converter lockup code starts at 9% and then slowly ramps up the PWM signal until it notices the slip between the engine and the input of the gearbox is less than 200 RPM, at which point it assumes it is locked up. By design, this gearbox does not fully lock up the torque converter as this would transfer engine vibrations to the rest of the car, making for an uncomfortable ride at low engine speeds. One unique part of this is that unlike a manual gearbox, the clutch can be applied during gear changes. This keeps the engine and input shaft synchronized so that the engine doesn't suddenly increase in speed during gear shifts. With this implemented, I went for a test drive to see how the gearbox performs. As you can see from this, the gear shifts definitely look a lot more clean when compared to the previous attempt when the torque converter was unlocked during gear shifts. However, the shifting quality, especially at low engine speed, is too harsh. So rather than wreck my gearbox, I started work on a better pressure management system for gear changes. This is because currently the shift pressure the gearbox uses are one static value for each gear change, however this is far from optimal. You see there are many factors that my TCM should take into account for it to decide how much pressure to give to a clutch pack during the gear changes, just to name a few. 
One, the engine and input shaft speed. The faster the rotation of the input shaft or the engine, the higher the mainline pressure of the gearbox, as the fluid pump is being driven faster. Two, the temperature of the fluid in the gearbox. As the fluid in the gearbox warms up, it becomes thinner, meaning it flows faster in the channels in the valve body and gearbox. Three, the load on the input shaft. At higher engine loads, it will take more pressure to move the clutches inside the gearbox. Recapping on how the gearbox works, my TCM has to control these two pressure regulatory solenoids in the valve body. This one dictates the firmness of each shift, and this one dictates the speed of each shift. As these solenoids are given more current by my TCM, they open up more and the pressure to the clutches in the gearbox is actually reduced, meaning a lower PWM value for my controller gives a higher pressure in the gearbox. So I ended up building an algorithm which uses three tables to look up the correct PWM value to send to the SPC and MPC solenoids. Firstly, the algorithm looks at the current load demand on my gearbox and then selects the pressure to use. Then this pressure reading is multiplied by a number which is selected based on the current engine speed. Finally, this number is unmodified again by a multiplier chosen based on the temperature of the gearbox fluid. Next, I modified the shifting algorithm itself to constantly monitor the ratio of the gearbox and automatically end the shift sequence once the gear shift has actually been completed. In its current state, the gearbox holds the shift solenoids open for a fixed period of time, which is not good for the solenoids as this can lead to burning them out. Now, in order to easily monitor the progress of gear changes whilst test driving, I did some clever CAN manipulation of my TCM so that I get an upshift or downshift indicator on the instrument cluster during gear changes, which then resumes back to showing the current gear number once the shift has completed. Then, a few days later, I had a crazy idea. Guys, a thought just occurred to me, which is that whilst I'm driving and testing, I'm always having to glance over here at my laptop, which is having log view from my TCM to check if it's shifting or not. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems a bit unsafe because I'm constantly having to look from here to here to back here again. But a thought occurred to me, which is that I've got this display here. And I think I could maybe do something with this so that I don't have to keep glancing here anymore. One eternity later. Now, just like that, we have my head unit over here. And if I swipe to the right of the fuel consumption power page, I now have this very nice display, which shows me the gearbox as well as which clutch packs in it are applied using the red. Uh, so the red here indicates which clutch packs are applied, some status information, which I need to know, and the solenoid positions. So if I turn the ignition on and start the engine and move to reverse, so they go red to indicate if they're on, and that red color is a gradient of 0 to 255 uh, because of a custom CAN frame I'm sending to the head unit from my TCM. The car now knows what position all the solenoids are in, which is actually quite handy. Finally, with everything coming together, I thought now would be a good time for us to do a test drive and see how the gearbox performs.
behind me, I'm going to try doing a full acceleration test and I'm going to be changing it near red line with wide open frontal. Let's see how that goes. One hour later.
I guess now that shows this car driving really well. So I will now cut back to editing me. So I was personally super impressed with that first test drive of my new map system, although there are still definitely improvements to be made as you may have seen in that video. In the next part of this series I'll be adding automated adaptation to perfect every shift the car does, as well as the initial automatic code and behaviour for each profile on the TCM. I hope you all enjoyed that part of my custom TCM series, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye!